So I have a question for you. Have you ever wondered what would happen if you took a full-on Kawasaki Ninja 400 and redesigned the bodywork to fit a naked profile, then added a more upright riding position, and finally softened the taunt Joe Racer suspension? Well, the answer is right here in front of you. Voila! The all-new Kawasaki Z400 ABS. That's right. At the heart of this runner is the same 399cc parallel twin you'll find in its Ninja garage mate, said to produce roughly 42 horsepower. That 8-valve engine has been mated to a butter-smooth 6-speed, sporting one of the lightest slipper clutches we've ever experienced. With the Z, you also get two-piston ABS brakes, six-chamber LED lights front and rear, and an instrument cluster that supports an easy-to-read gear position indicator. All in all, a tidy modern package that leaves nothing on the table. But you don't have to take my word for it. Here now is this week's guest road rider, a 1,000cc sport bike owner, Tyler Forbes. So Tyler, the first thing I want to say is you rolled up this morning on a 1,000cc super sport and I thought, uh-oh, I've made the wrong choice here. This guy's going to be bored, right? Like it's a 400, you ride a thou, but actually you've been smiling all day. Yeah, I have. I mean, this bike's a lot of fun. You, yeah. you can't take that away from it. I was expecting a lot less out of it being a 400, but it's actually got a lot of power and a lot of good usable power. It's yeah. got good bottom end being a parallel twin. It makes some fun sounds when you get on the throttle hard. It's got a good intake sound. And I didn't have to wait for the bike at all. Like it, it actually had lots of power to get up and go if you need to pass somebody in traffic or lots of good low end for around town. It, yeah, it didn't make me wait at all. So you threw a leg over, you fired it up, and off we went. So tell us about the motor. It's a 400, what did you think? Well, it has actually a lot of power. Not too much that a beginner rider would have to be afraid of it. Yeah. But enough to keep somebody that's been riding for a long time happy, like you would put a smile on your face. It's got a nice smooth power curve. It's not, you're sitting there revving it, waiting for something to happen. It's it, right off the bottom, it's got good smooth power delivery. Yeah, I was impressed. And and you say for a beginner, the clutch, did you, could you believe how light that clutch action is? That's about the lightest clutch I've ever felt. It's it's super smooth and actually hand in hand with that, it's got one of the best gearboxes I've ever felt. And the shifting is super short and precise, but it, you never feel like you're trying to catch second gear and hitting neutral, just everything's right there. Again, something you don't expect on a 400, it's got brakes with ABS. What do you think of the brakes? Actually, yeah, I, I never got into a situation to have to use ABS, but the brakes that it's got on it, very ample for the power. Like it's got good power and it's got even better brakes to stop it. And they're not super harsh. So again, if somebody was buying this as a first bike, if you get on the brakes, it's right there, but it's not so much that you're gonna flip over the handlebars or right. something like that. And the yeah, the rear brake is the rear brake is good too, but the, the front actually really has good good stopping power. It's it, riding position and comfort. Let's talk about that for a second. We're about the same height. I found my legs a little cramped, but the bar is really nice. You're not sort of leaned over too far. It's a fairly nice, comfortable, upright riding position. It really is. It's it's not too upright that you feel like you're sitting on an old school bicycle or something. Yeah. It's just enough position that you feel like you're on a motorcycle, you're out to have a good time. But yes, you're definitely not laying on it with a lot of weight on your wrist. Is I could see you riding it very far. It's, it's quite comfortable, but I do agree. I'm, we're about the same height and the legs could use a little more room, but yep. it's, it's not too bad. It really is not that bad. How did you find the, uh, the controls, the cockpit, this little module you talked about earlier? I really like the, the gauge package actually. It's, mm -hmm. It's simple. There's not too much to look at that you're getting distracted from what you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, the tack is easy to see. Even in the sunlight, you can read it clearly. I like the simple controls. There's not a whole bunch of extra swi switches and buttons or what have you. Everything's where it should be. They're easy to reach. The only complaint I would have about those is actually the mirrors. They're just a little bit too close together. So you can see a little bit past your shoulders and other than that, you're kind of looking at your shoulders, but that it's pretty minimal. You can still see out of them. It's just, you might have to move your head a little bit. 
So who do you think uh, we're going to recommend this bike to? Who would be interested in this bike? Obviously entry-level riders, right? Yeah, I think that would be the main market would be entry-level riders because it really can do anything. You can commute with it. If you had to get on the highway, it's got enough for the highway to get out of the way of people or to keep up with traffic. Um, it's smooth enough to ride through town. It's got that nice low-end grunt from the twin. So I would say probably the entry-level person that just wants a good all-around bike for everything but I wouldn't rule it out for an experienced rider that's looking for a commuter that would be, I'm sure, great on fuel and reliable, and it's still got enough power to put a smile on your face. Well, that's a testimony right there, because you smiled just saying that. I know it, it you've does, been smiling all morning. Yeah. Great job. Well, thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.